Hello viewers, you're welcome to Inky Culture channel. This is where I share sewing tutorials and um, DIYs. Here, I'll be showing you how to make a hotter neck jumpsuit. So let's get started. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a, a hotter neck jumpsuit. And this type of jumpsuit will not have a zipper, but you'll be able to wear it because the hip circumference will also be transferred to the waist. So that is how it will be easy for you to wear. So the jumpsuit length is JSL. So you can see all the measurements you need for this tutorial. They are, they are here already. You can pause so as to study the measurements. The, the bust, the shoulder, the half length, the hip, the jumpsuit length, the lap, the knee, the ankle, and the crotch. So these are all the measurements. Where I put C means circumference, where I put L means length. So on the lap, we have 22 for the circumference of the lap, and the L is the length of the lap. The knee circumference is also 16 wide, the length, placing your shoulder, your tape measure from the waist to the knee is 23. So this is the jumpsuit length, which is 58, and the half length is 16. So I'm subtracting 16 from 58, so I have 42. That means 42 is for the trouser. Do you understand? And for a jumpsuit, the trouser is not a low waist trouser. It is a high waist trouser that will be attached to the upper bodies. So I added two inches sewing allowance, two inches hemming and sewing allowance, two inches to with added to 42 will give me 44. I hope you get that. So I will start by drawing a line. This line will serve as my waist line. So after drawing the line, I will place my tape measure and take that 44 inches trouser length. So the first thing we are cutting now is the trouser that will be attached to the bodies to make it a jumpsuit. So I will rule a line also to indicate this line. This is where the trouser we end. And um, from there, I will proceed by taking, this will serve as the M line at the end of the day. So we are going to take our all the measurements from here place your tape measure and first of all take the half length measurement the half length is you know in this 44 inches for the trouser we have included this joining allowance to the to the upper bodies so you're going to rule a line for the half length half inches joining allowance to the upper bodies so that's what i just did the half inch will be used to join it to the upper body start the sewing allowance so from there i will now take all the vertical measurements i'll take all the vertical measurements so the measurement of your jumpsuit is you're going to the waist for the jumpsuit is different from the waist of your normal trouser so this is if your hip length originally is nine or is seven inches on your trouser or your pant that means you are going to add two inches to it because this is upper waist. Your, your jumpsuit, your trouser for jumpsuit is starting immediately from the underbust. Immediately after, immediately after the underbust, I mean on the half length itself. But if you are making a pant, you know it won't start from the half length. So that's why I'll be taking it nine. I added two inches to the seven inches hip length. My original hip length for a pant is seven. But because it is a it is a jumpsuit, I'm adding two inches extra allowance to it, making it nine. So all the measurements I'll be I'll be taking here, I'll add when I get to the lap two. If my lap is um, for example twenty, I'll add two inches to it, lap height. So that's how it goes on and on like that. So on the crotch, originally the, my crotch is ten, but in this case I will be adding two inches to it. The way I added to the hip, so if I added 2 inches to it, I'll be taking 12. So I just took 12 for the crotch right now. So from there, from the 12, you are going to come down by 3 inches. That's for your lap. So that's the standard. You're going to come down from your crotch by 3 inches, and I just did that now. I have used a, a, a mark to indicate that. That means from the waist, the lap is 15. Do you understand? So the lap height, so it equals to the lap height that I just that I took also. So from there, I will take the knee length. The knee length from here, you see L under 23. So I will put 23. I've added 2 inches to that one already. That's why I'm not adding any 2 inches to it again. Originally, my knee length is 21. 
So adding two inches to it makes it 23. I hope you get that. So the next is the ankle where the trouser will end. So and that is it. I said it's 42 plus one and a half inch ME allowance makes it 43. I hope you get that. So you can see 43 and a half here because I started from the the half length measurement that I took on the waist. That's why it's not up to 44 as you are seeing it. So this is 42 and the one and a half inches remaining would serve as my aiming allowance. I, I hope you get that. So the camera cannot capture where I put, where I started, um, where I put my tape rule. So from here, you're going to take, you're going to rule a line to indicate where the trouser length will end. So the remaining will now serve as M line. M line. This is the M line. So I'll make it. I'm trying to write E inside so that it won't look like E line. So from there, I'm going to use a line to indicate all the points that I've marked. So I'm going to rule it out like so. I'm going to rule it out like so horizontally. So the next thing to do is to label. We have the HP means hip, C means crotch, T means the tie or the lap and the kn means knee so on the crotch now that's where you start your measurements from i'm going to input the hip measurement the hip is 38 divided by 4 means nine and a half and i added half inch is making it 10 so i just took 10 inches on the crotch so i will take the same 10 inches on the waist i'll take the taste the same 10 inches on the waist and also on the hip and i'll connect all the points with a straight ruler so I'll connect all the points with a straight ruler so I haven't connected it with a straight ruler the next thing to do is to input my crotch curve so I'll take the measurement here 10 inches divided by 4 is 2 and a half. We are going to take the measurement here, which is 10, will be divided by 4. 2 and a half is input there. I just input 2 and a half from the straight line towards that end. Then I would draw the line with my French cuff and smoothen the line with my straight ruler. So, taking the measurement again from the point, I have... 12 and a half and I'll be dividing 12 and a half into two I have six one quarter so I'll take six one quarter like so I'll mark it so towards this side I'll be taking six one quarter down this is for us to have a uniform measurement on the thigh on the knee and also on the ankle so we'll take six one six one quarter down so that whatever measurement we want to put on the tie, the knee, and the ankle now will be divided equally. And for us to have a equal, a, a trusser that will stand firm on the body. So, I will take six one quarter down all through and I will indicate it with a straight ruler. And that is what I'm doing right away. So right now, it means the trouser has been divided into two equal parts, one trouser, one leg of a trouser. So we are going to, the circumference measurement on the tie now is, I mean the lap is 22. 22 divided by 2 is 11. Then we are going to divide 11 by 2 again. We have 5 and a half on each side. On each side, I just input 5 and a half, 5 and a half on the tie. And on the knee, we have... 12 and we have 16 inches as a circumference 16 divided by 2 because we have two leg is 8 so for one leg you're going to is okay 16 divided by 2 is 8 and then we are going to divide 8 8 by 2 we have 4 4 4 on each side of the trouser 4 4 so i've input 4 4 on the on each side so here on the ankle 
um, going to input we have circumference 12 12 divided by 6 by 2 is 6 and then um, 6 divided by 2 is 3 3 inches on both end so we have 6 already so you know we are going to use this to cut another piece so we have two pieces of the front trouser and two pieces of the back trouser so this is the front i'm connecting all those lines that i just took i'm connecting it with the straight ruler and uh, i'll connect some with my hip cuff and some with my french cuff so i'll connect this with my hip cuff like so so i'll just you study the equipment that can connect the points well so if you started study the equipment that can connect so then you use the preferred equipment so i'll connect it like so i hope you don't forget that we are making a hotter neck jumpsuit and this jumpsuit is um it has a wider leg on the ankle it is not um it is not that and tight it is something free so we are going to take the hip connect it to the hip like so just connect it to all the points like so i'm trying to look for a way i will place it that it will match the points and all the marks that i've put there so just look for the best equipment you can use to join the lines together to achieve a good result so from there you know i told you the waist carries the hip measurement so we just go up to the waist like so the waist is free because this type of jumpsuit does not have a zipper so i'm going to add one inch allowance here because it's something free i've added one inch allowance there i also had it on the knee then i will add it also on the ankle so then i'll connect the lines like so through to the ankle then i'll go ahead and add one inch is allowance here also and also on the knee i'm going to add one inch also to this part And when I get to this point, on the crotch, I'll just connect it to the thigh, not to the crotch. Because the, the hip will be kind of smart, but when it come, when, it, when, when you get to the knee line, it will become freer through to the M line of the trouser. So I'll just connect it down like so. So it's a kind of free jumpsuit, casual way. So I will also connect this like so. I will make the, I want the hip to be kind of um, shapey a little. So I will connect it down to the M line of the trousers. So I've made a correction there. I did not connect to half inch. To one inch that I made on the tie, I have made an adjustment. I only connected it to the original measurement that is on the tie length. So we are, I will just cut through like so. This is the front pattern, and I will go ahead and um, use this front pattern to cut the back block. So I will go ahead and use this to cut the back block. So just cut through like so. All the measurement, all the uh, joining allowance has been added from the beginning. That's why we are not adding any sewing allowance again. We have added the M in allowance and the joining allowance on the waist. So we have the front pattern. So I'll be using this front to cut the back. So on the crotch, there will be an extension of um, two inches. On the crotch length so the crotch cuff will be extended like so 
by 2 inches then I will add 1 inch to all the measurements starting from the knee down I will be adding 1 inch this 1 inch will serve as the sewing allowance of the trousers sewing allowance of the trousers so I'll be adding one inch on both side I've added one inch on the other side too because you need two inches to sew so making two inches all together but on this waistline I'll be adding two inches here because I did not add any allowance on the other side so the two inches that is here will serve for the other side that I did not add allowance so I'm going to connect it through to the hip line like so with a straight line I hope you get that then I can con the other connections will be used uh, I can use my hip curve to make all the joining here and use my straight ruler to complete the rest like so so I added one inch on both side for this and on the crotch you're going to come inward by half inch and um, you're going to connect it with your french cuff like so through to the so here you're going to come outward here also originally this is where you're going to link the line that is coming from the waistline from the crotch we're going to link it to this line and connect it just look for the best equipment to use for the connection of the crotch curve and then we have the crotch curve connected to the tie to the knee and to the ankle so here I'm going to complete this by connecting it like so so you can see to cut the back is not difficult I'm cutting it already it's just for you to add allowances left and right so here on the crotch I forgot to come down by half an inch so you come down by half an inch and you connect it so I'm going to use my free hand to make the connection now. It must come down a little bit lower than the front block. So I'll be connecting that with my French cuff like so. So from there, I can continue my cutting. So I will use this to cut the fabric right away. So here I want to input the pocket. We're going to measure two inches inward for the pocket. So measure two inches inward, and from there you are going to take the length six inches, or you can use seven inches, whatever is convenient for you. Just make it accommodate your arm. Um, your hand so um, i input six inches and i'll connect it you can connect it with a straight ruler if you like so in this case i'll be connecting it with a french curve so i'll connect it like so and this is where the hand will come in this is for the pocket the pocket bag so we have length 14 inches length 14 inches and width is six six inches on fold so it has length 14 inches and then six inches on fold you can see the paper is on fold so you are going to place it like so then when you place it you trim it 
to the measurement of the trouser you can see i have trimmed it to the hip measurement to the side measurement of the trouser then you notch the center of the pocket bag notch it like so then you place it again and this time around you're going to open it up i hope you get that open it up and follow the pattern that you used to make the pocket opening then cut through like so just cut through like so so i forgot to input half inch sewing allowance so i'm trying to input it like so that means on this part you first of all your scissors will first of all go straight before you start curve i hope you get that so if there is any mistake during your pattern drafting adjustment is allowed that's the essence of pattern drafting so i'll first of all go the scissors first of all go straight before i will now make a curve so i'm going to cut through like so and then um, this is what we will have at the end of the day i will remove that then i can fold it up again that's the essence of the notch so and this is how it will be when you join it to the trouser i hope you can see that that's the pocket so this is the pattern that will be used to cut the pattern back so i'm going to trim this part out the part i just showed you so there is no measurement that can be attached to that just make a curve bend like so and just trim it out you can decide to leave your own like that but it's for you it's for it to be easy to fix while you want to fix your pocket so that all the extra allowance will not be disturbing you by the time you want to join your front block to your back block so this is how it will be when you want to join it you just join like so then you turn it inward so i will explain more when we get to the sewing section so the next thing to do is to go and use this pattern to cut out the fabric and i will show you the next stage so this is what we have after cutting with the the fabric so we have the front you label the front and you label the back this is the front and the back together i place the front on the back and i chop it label it as front and then um, back so i have cut all the the pocket also you use the pattern for the pocket to also cut the pocket and this is the basic bodies pattern so on the neckline you can see a straight line on the neckline the neckline i'm going to measure five inches straight like so just put a straight line and measure five inches for a medium size person five inches is okay then connect the five inches to the bust line. I just measure two in, one and a half inches away from the bust line. Then I connected it to the bust. I hope you get that. You won't get to the bust on your connection when you connect it slant like so. This this will serve as the armhole. Just two inches before the bust line, connect it to it slantly like so. Then notch the center front. And so we are going to fold like so this is where the rope will pass through this is where the rope will pass through so you will understand that by the time we start the sewing so this is the fabric I'm going to use the pattern to draft to cut out the fabric has been folded into two and also into four so having folded into four I'm going to place my pattern like so you can see the folded edge is towards my hand here so and you're going to input your hand mold. Use your chalk to input your hand mold like so. And add allowance. So I'm trying to add allowance on the neckline because there will be a folding. I'm going to fold it up like so. And bend your hand outside so that it will be able to capture all the, um, the arm mold part. So trace it out like so you can see the way i place the pattern paper i did not start from the center center directly i left some allowances like three inches allowance on the center like so because i want it to be very very free that's why i just place it like so 
so you can decide to add maybe four inches it depends on your preference so this is a very free um, jumpsuit so and um, having done that i have added two inches allowance on the upper part and half inch allowance on the down part so i will notch the center front this is the center front like so you can see that when i was cutting it i took i placed it um some distance away from the center front because i want it to be to form like gathers by the time i make the jumpsuit finish so this part will be folded up like so i'm going to stitch it i'll show you the process on the sewing machine and then um, the space is for the strap that will be hanging on the shoulder so here yeah, this is how i'm going to fold it and um, i'm going to stitch a rope that rope will pass through this um, space you will understand more when we get to the sewing machine so here we have the pocket this is the pocket this is how the pocket will look like and this is the front block so i'm going to stitch it right away like this i'll show you more of this also in the sewing process i'll be going on a break now i'll be back in a short while do you desire to be a professional fashion designer in just few weeks then what are you waiting for enroll at yinki kuto academy today our online, offline and physical trainings are open in the following classes. Advanced class for 4 weeks, intermediary class 8 weeks and beginner class for 20 weeks. For inquiries, please call 0805-794-4477 or 0903-218-4192. You can equally connect to us on our various social media platforms at Yinki Couture. Yinki Couture, home of dressmaking techniques. So, this is the pocket. This is how I'm going to pay, place the pocket. And then um, the right side will be facing the right side like so. And I will turn it inside like so. I will explain more to you on the sewing machine when we get to the sewing part. So, these are the straps that we are going to use for the belt. It will have a belt. So, the belt is for, like 44 inches length. And the width on fold is two and a half inches on fold. So the width of the belt must carry the because I'm going to use a silver buckle. Uh, um, uh, so when I get to the sewing machine, also I will explain more on that. So just and these straps, we we are I'm going to put it inside the the neck line, the neckline area. So the strap is one and a half inch width on fold so that by the time i join it together with half inch i will have one inch left so on fold the strap is one and a half inch so the length of the strap can be i'm going to join two together here because the fabric is no more enough that's why it's short like this i'll be joining two together to make one strap so and the length here is 25 inches for one strap so when I join two together, I will have 15 inches for a single strap. I hope you get that. When I take the measurement now. So, this is the strap. I will be cutting two of this again, making four. So, you can make it any length. You can make it long. You can make it, make it short. Just make sure it is enough for you to knot. Because we are going to knot these straps on the shoulder. So I'm going to knot it, knot it on the shoulder and um, to form something nice. So just cut it out like so. And this is the outcome of the jumpsuit. You can see the rope that I said I will put on the neckline. This is how it will look. You can see the belt. The belt is like two inches width. You can see the pocket. This is the pocket and it's very it's looking very nice so so i will see you in the next tutorial where i will show you the sewing process so don't forget to subscribe like and share this video and if there is any question or, or observation don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section i'll reply as soon as i see it thank you and god bless you see you in my next video bye